Hello everyone, so welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be learning on Spring Tool Suite. What is Spring Tool Suite and how we can download Spring Tool Suite, how we can install the Spring Tool Suite and how we can use Spring Tool Suite, also known as STS, to create simple Spring Boot applications and it reduces our effort to create Spring Boot applications so all right let's get started so i have also created a few tutorials already on spring boot technology and those tutorials might be helpful to you if you are someone trying to learn spring boot right from the scratch so uh, this is just an ongoing playlist on spring boot so make sure to watch those videos if you are entirely new to spring boot and as we go on as we proceed in this playlist we will be learning spring boot right from the beginning to the end so in this tutorial we will be learning how to install spring tool suite and in the next video we will learn how to create simple spring boot applications using spring tool suite and also a few other ways in which we can create spring boot applications okay so let's get started first what we need to do is we need to go to a browser go to google.com and search for Spring Tool Suite download. So it will take us to this website. Just click on this. And if you scroll down, you will find a link for this Spring Tools 4. 4 is the latest version. Just click on this link. It will redirect us to this page. So here we can see we have a few options. We can download Spring Tools for Visual Studio Code. But the thing that we are looking for, the program that we are looking for is Spring Tools for Eclipse. So here we can see based on the operating system, we can choose our Spring Tools version. So I'll go ahead with the Windows one. So just click on this and a download will start. So I already have the download in my folders. So I'll just cancel this download. So I have my STS EXE file downloaded in my local system. So let's begin the installation part. First, we will have to double click on the EXE file. It's opening. So we can see that a small pop-up window appears at the top left corner. And let's wait till the installation is complete. After that, we will see how to proceed with the installation. So it's roughly done. Okay, so the installation is complete. Now we can see that we have another additional folder created in my directory. So let's just double click on this. So we can see that we have a bunch of folders, files, etc. which were created when we installed STS. So what is the file that we are looking for what is the program we are looking for is this spring tool suite 4.exe so this is an exe file which will help us to open spring tool suite so let's just double click on it and see what happens so we can see that the spring tool suite 4 is opening the sts is opening now let's just wait for a few seconds so that it is open and we can get started with an introduction to STS UI and how to create Spring Boot applications accordingly. So we are able to see that it is asking for a workspace where our projects will be stored. So by default it has created a workspace. For you also it will create a default workspace. If you want to change you can just click on browse and select any workspace of your wish. I'll just leave it to default and click on launch. So now my STS will open and let's get familiar with the user interface of STS first and then we will proceed with creating our first Spring Boot application. Okay, so my STS is installed properly and we can see that we have a beautiful UI open in front of us. So this almost looks like Eclipse itself. 
So we can see that we have a few options. We can create a Java project. We can create a Maven project. We can create new Spring Starter project and etc. So I'll just go the old way. I'll just click on File, go to New, and click on Project. So here a dialog box will pop up. I'll just click on Spring Boot. Spring Starter Project and click on Next. So this dialog box opens in front of my screen. So just fill in the essentials. So we'll give it the name. My first STS project type I will choose as Maven as we are building Maven projects. Our build tool will be Maven. You can also choose Gradle Groovy or Gradle Kotlin. But here we'll leave it to Maven. The packaging is Jar. You can also select war. The Java version, you can see it has already picked up the latest Java version, which is installed on my system. And the language also it has taken as Java. Just go ahead and fill in the group artifact ID and all. And I'll just also fill in the package name. And once I'm done with all this, I'll click on next and I will choose the dependencies that I need my application to have. So let's suppose I will be building a web application that will be making REST template use REST template calls. So for that, we will have to include the Spring Web dependency. Also, I will select the JPA dependency as I will be interacting with database. Let's assume and also let's uh, have an H2 dependency. So H2 is an in-memory database which comes by default in Spring Boot. We will have a clear discussion on H2 database in the upcoming tutorials. But for now, let's just proceed with these three dependencies, the Spring Web, the Spring Data JPA and the H2 database. I'll click on finish. And you can see here that the project is getting started. So once it's 100% complete, we'll just click on our project. So we can see we have the folders that we do have in our Java based applications, the Java, the resources folder, the test folder. So first let's click on the palm.xml file and let's see the contents, see the dependencies that have been put in this file. So we can see that the Spring Boot Starter Data JPA dependency is there, the Spring Boot Starter web dependency is there and also we have the dependency of H2. Okay, so these three dependencies only I mentioned when I was creating this project. So we are good until now. Now let's see what our main class looks like. So this is the main class that has been created. We can see that the annotation at the rate Spring Boot application annotation is already there. And this is the main entry point of our Spring Boot applications. I've also created a video on this annotation, Spring Boot application annotation. So you can just go ahead and watch that in my, on my channel. So this is our Spring Boot application annotation. And let's, you know, just have a quick look on whether we have any test class or not. So we also have a test class created and it is using the annotation Spring Boot test. And individual method level, we have the annotation at the rate test. So we are good to go. Now, whatever, if I want to implement any REST template calls, if I want to create controller, I can just go ahead and create using the new keyword. But we'll do that in the future videos as this video has already gone too long. So I'll leave it up to here. We, in this video, we saw the how to create Spring Boot applications using Spring Tool Suite. First, we saw how and from where to download the Spring Tool Suite. And then we saw how to install Spring Tool Suite. And then we saw how to create Spring Boot applications, how to feed in the group ID, the artifact ID, and also how to add the dependencies. So this was pretty easy, right? Okay, so with that, we come to an end of this tutorial. 
For the next video, we will see how to create Spring Boot applications in an another way. And consequently, we will be creating more, more and more complex Spring Boot applications, you know, which will have controllers, which will have services, which will make an interaction with database, MongoDB, SQL. So these videos are on their way. These videos are going to be published on this channel consequently in a matter of time, but we are proceeding in a way where we can learn Spring Boot from scratch. So that's why we are proceeding one level forward in every video. Okay guys, so that was it for this tutorial. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, whatever problem you guys are facing, make sure to leave those in the comments. I will be there to reply for each and every single comment. Any problem you face, you can just let me know in the comments. I will also leave my LinkedIn ID in the description box so you can connect with me over LinkedIn. Okay, thank you. So see you in the next video.